So uh, when we started this conference, I wanted to make it very deliberately uh, a community conference. I wanted to limit the amount of people from the electron maintainers group that are up here to exactly one. But I also wanted to make sure that, you know, I wanted to have no people working at Slack here because uh, then it would look too much like a marketing event. Um, so I turned to Sam, who at the time worked at Atlassian. Um, and I'm now presenting to you Sam, soon to be working at Slack, so that didn't really work out. Uh, but Sam is one of the core maintainers on Electron. Uh, we've worked together for a few years now. And uh, yeah, he's just going to tell you a little bit about you know, how Electron is built and how we like, do the whole thing anyway, right? Because that's interesting. So please give it up for Sam. One, two, ah, there we go. All right, so hi. Uh, as previously mentioned, uh, I am Sam. Um, you probably know me better from my GitHub handle, at uh, Marshall of Sound. That's me. Uh, I'm all over the Electron repository, so you'll just see me randomly commenting on stuff. Uh, you hopefully don't know me from my antics at university. I, it was fun. We'll move on. Um, so a bit about me. Uh, I graduated back in 2017. Uh, I worked for Atlassian for two years. And as Felix just pointed out, I'm about to start full time at Slack. Um, I've written my fair share of Electron applications. Uh, I first, my first one that I wrote was way back in 2015 when it wasn't even called Electron. If anyone was back around back then, it was called Atom Shell because it was written explicitly for Atom. Uh, and I've been a member of the Electron core team for the last two and a half years, uh, give or take. So that's me. Uh, what about everyone else? So uh, when we think about the people involved in Electron, uh, we kind of split them into about three uh, shells or, or groups of users. Um, at a high level, those groups are uh, the maintainers. So uh, those are the people actively working on uh, fixing bugs, implementing features, upgrading Chrome, and so on uh, in Electron Core itself. Um, then we have the, uh, the AFP, uh, the App Feedback Program members. Uh, these are the apps that are in uh, active communication with the maintainers group. Uh, helping us test out new versions of Electron um, and find bugs. Uh, I'll talk a lot more about this group a, a, a bit later on. Um, and finally, the, uh, the community, uh, arguably the uh, most important group here. Uh, that's all of you folks, uh, the people using Electron, uh, building and releasing apps, making modules, tooling, supporting services, update frameworks, the works, uh, all that stuff, that's you. Um, so first off, let's uh, discuss the maintainers. <laughs> That's us. Um, this is mostly what I'm here to talk about today, uh, how we operate, what we even do, uh, how we do it, and most importantly, what you can do to help us. Um, Electron is a massive project nowadays. Uh, back when I first started in 2016, there were only a, a few active maintainers, um, almost entirely from GitHub. Um, now we have a, a large group of maintainers from multiple companies all working together to make Electron better. Um, these are just the people who, who let me use their, their faces in, in my slide. Uh, there are even more than this actively working on Electron. Uh, as you can see, though, we've come a long way from just a small team working uh, from GitHub. Uh, it's now a multi-company and slightly annoyingly sometimes a multi-time zone project. Uh, this is a map I made a while back of uh, where all the Electron maintainers kind of are in the world. Uh, that kid down there in, in Sydney, Australia, that was me. Um, when I made this graphic, technically I'm, I'm about to move to Vancouver, so that'll make the map slightly less scattered. Um, but between both coasts of the US, Europe, Japan, um, finding a time for a meeting is normally a lot harder than the meeting itself. Uh, and being that kid in Australia, this was me a lot of the time. Great fun, would not recommend, but uh, worth it. <laughs> um, and as the maintainers group's grown, so has the community around it. So this is a slide I actually made for a different presentation a year ago. Um, each image here is an icon for an app from the uh, Electron slash apps repository on GitHub, uh, where community members and, and like companies can register their app as being made with Electron. And we can generate like nice lists of apps and like pages for your app, like this. This is one of my apps. Looks very pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was back in 2018. I made this slide in about uh, February 2018 uh, to show off exactly how much growth we've had in the last year and just apps that are like telling us they've been made with Electron. I ran the same script again uh, three days ago to generate this slide. 
which is uh, the, the, the 2019 group of apps. There's actually three off the bottom that I couldn't make fit because of the way Keynote was annoying me. But the point is there's actually about double the number of apps in the last year alone uh, registered on that repository, which is insane. So yeah. Um, with that growth in both uh, the developer community and the maintainers, uh, the Electron team itself has needed to kind of scale at the same pace, which was challenging at first. It was a, a pretty like explosive growth. Um, I'm now going to run through uh, some of the problems we faced as uh, a maintainers group and some of the solutions to those problems and how you all can, can help us moving forward. So the, the, the biggest problem, and probably the one that most of you will be uh, aware of, is uh, upgrading Chromium. Um, so for those of you who don't know, every new major version of Electron, so that's uh, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, uh, has an upgraded internal version of Chromium. Uh, some of you might be sitting there thinking, what's the problem? Uh, how hard can it be? It's just a dependency, just update the version and no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, as an example, uh, here's a recent Chromium upgrade PR uh, that we've landed. Uh, we landed uh, 26th of October, nice. Um, if you look at that pull request, there's uh, 6,300 changed lines, 165 touched files, five people reviewed it, and seven different people landed commits in that pull request. And that's just to update from Chromium 69 to Chromium 70. One version. Uh, all these changes are due to either breaking changes in uh, Chromium's content layer, uh, or that require refactors, or sometimes just complete rewrites of some internal elect electron logic or any one of our hundred-ish patches that we apply on top of Chromium doesn't apply cleanly anymore, and we need to manually uh, fix that patch, uh, rebase it. Um, and if this sounds bad, it actually used to be way worse. Um, so let's go back in time a bit. Uh, this is the Chromium 58 upgrade from well over a year ago now. Uh, and back then, it was multiple pull requests across multiple repositories. Um, that were all vendored Git submodules in the Electron repository. So uh, we have uh, Brightray and LibChromium content that were actually Git submodules in the Electron repository. Uh, and they were all built together using a build system called JIP, which is uh, what everyone uses to build native modules. The problem is Chromium itself didn't technically support being built by JIP anymore, so we were kind of doing something that even Chrome weren't doing. Uh, and because of this, we used to run into all kinds of problems like mismatched Windows SDKs and incorrect Clang compiler versions. Like, uh, we've had issues where you couldn't fetch, run like window.fetch on Windows 10 in 64 bit because we got the wrong SDK version. And that kind of stuff just wouldn't happen if we were uh, using Chromium's build system, which, moving right along, <laughs> We now do. So um, over the past year, we've actually removed the Brightray repository. Uh, that code's now in Electron Core. We've removed libchromium content um, and merged that into the Electron repository. And we've changed our build pipeline. Massive shout out to Jeremy, wherever he's hiding. Um, we completely moved from JIP to GN, which is uh, Chromium's build system, which makes everything so much better. <laughs> um, and we made an organized effort to uh, reduce the number of patches that we apply on top of Chromium. Uh, all this work has gradually made the upgrade process uh, slowly but surely easier. Um, and most maintainers are in agreement that the upgrades done since making all these changes have been much faster and better overall. And you should start to see the result of that work with uh, Electron 4 and Electron 5 and, and, and more going forward. So yeah, that, that's Chromium upgrades. Um, big thing number two, tedious tasks. Um, so historically, there are some things that uh, Electron maintainers have had to do that are purely just time consuming. They aren't too technically difficult, they just take time. And that's time I'm sure you all would be much rather that we spend on things like bug fixes and implementing features or aforementioned upgrading Chromium. Um, so here are some examples of uh, some of the things that we have to just spend time doing. Uh, so releasing new versions, it's not as simple as just running npm publish. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there now. Um, we don't just run npm publish and everything happens. Um, Whenever we release a new Electron version, we have to build it for all three platforms, uh, two arches on Windows and four arches on Linux. Um, and sometimes, if things didn't go right, this could take a whole day or multiple days of engineering time of someone literally just sitting there trying to release a new version of Electron. Uh, and that's not a good way to spend engineering time. Um, also, backporting PRs. So some of you may know we, we maintain multiple active release branches at any one time. 
So this is uh, 4.0, 3.0, 2.0. We maintain all of those. So if there's a bug in 2.0 and we fix it in master, we'll try and backport that fix to 2.0 so that it gets fixed. <laughs> um, but making those backport PRs means that you make one PR to master, it goes through code review, and then you have to manually cherry pick those commits to three new branches to manually send those commits to each release branch. And it, it's just time consuming. Most of the time, it's a clean cherry pick, and then you have to make pull requests, and it's a waste of time. <laughs> but the good news is, all these things here in this list, uh, we've actually successfully automated um, so that we as maintainers don't need to worry about them anymore. And we can spend more time worrying about things like Chromium upgrades. Uh, I'm only going to highlight two of these things that are probably the biggest time savers. Uh, number one that I'm probably most proud of is uh, backporting. Uh, so aforementioned, uh, when we make a PR to master, we also want to put it back on release branches. Um, we made a bot that does it for us. We called this bot TROP. Uh, and to explain why it's called TROP, I've made a handy animation in Keynote. Are we ready? Da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, we come up with cool names. Um, so uh, it backports PRs based on GitHub labels. We make the pull request. We label it with uh, a branch that we want to target. And as soon as we merge it, TROP comes in, clones the repository, tries to cherry pick those commits onto the target branch, and just automatically makes a pull request for us. We let CI run, and if everything's green, we just merge it. It's beyond easy. In 2018 alone, TROP made over 400 pull requests. That's more pull request than any human working on Electron. <laughs> so uh, shout out to Trop, the real MVP. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how we've automated backports. Uh, number two, and this is a more recent development, uh, releasing. So we made an, another bot called Sudowoodoo. Uh, for any Pokemon buffs out there, you'll know that Sudowoodoo is a, is a Pokemon with a single move called Mimic. Um, so we built this bot to literally do exactly what a human would do when they're releasing Electron. M mimic the human, um, but do it all automatically for us. Um, so it will clone Electron, bump versions, trigger CI builds, publish a new GitHub release, generate release notes, and publish uh, the NPM package that everyone gets to use. Um, and if everything goes well, uh, releases now only take an hour or so from start to finish. We run one command in Slack, and off the bot goes and releases it for us, which is brilliant. Uh, thanks to this automation, we can now start releasing nightly builds uh, of Electron. Uh, they've kind of started-ish. Um, you can check out the Electron-nightly package on NPM. Um, that's where all the nightly builds will go. So there's actually uh, 5.0 nightlies. I think we sent one out a few days ago just to make sure that it worked. There's one of those already on NPM, so you can check that out. Um, yeah, Sudowoodoo, awesome bot. Um, next up. Prioritization. This isn't a problem unique to Electron. Uh, all development teams struggle with this, right? Like, what should I do? When should I do it? How exactly should I solve a problem? Like, we could spend five minutes on it now, or five days. You choose. Um, relevant XKCD. Yeah, I'm an XKCD fan. It's cool. Um, we have to manage this problem across different companies, though. Um, like, we have uh, Slack, GitHub, Microsoft, uh, Atlassian, and a whole bunch of uh, other companies uh, pitching in. So uh, to help with this issue and to help us remain objective while we're trying to fix bugs and solve problems, uh, we have the AFP. Um, the app feedback program is for companies and apps using Electron uh, to help us test out betas and find bugs in Electron and prioritize what bugs and features we deal with on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, current members who have given permission for me to well, show their names, <laughs> are these people. Um, so we've got uh, Discord, Microsoft, OpenFin, WhatsApp, Slack, Elasian, and there are more, um, but they've chosen to remain anonymous. <laughs> but uh, massive shout out to these people. Uh, a lot of the, the bug fixes and uh, issues that have been fixed in 4.0 and 3.0 were largely responsible to these people trying out the releases and finding them before we did. So shout out to them. Uh, you can find out more about the app feedback program and the process and requirements for, for joining um, in our AFP blog post. Um, if you can't remember that URL because it's very long, you can just go to the Electron website and it's like the third blog post down. Give or take a few, should be obvious. Um, yeah, AFP, very good. <laughs> uh, so next up, security. Um, this is harder um, because 
as an open source project, someone can't just come along and raise like an issue on the, ele on the Electron repository and be like, haha, I can hack all the Electron apps. Because um, that's open. As soon as someone makes that issue, uh, everyone can see it. And that's not really responsible disclosure. Um, to solve this issue, uh, w w we have a, a, like a dedicated email address that people can report security issues to us. Um, all, all that I'll explain in a bit. Uh, quick highlights from the last few years. We've only had a few. Uh, you should all uh, be following our blog post. Uh, any information to do with uh, security fixes, we always publish uh, a blog post and we tweet about it. So you can follow the Twitter account, which is at electronjs, um, which is always good. Uh, we always get CV numbers. You can see, oh, no, no laser. Uh, we've got CV numbers for all of our, all our security fixes. So we do follow a process. And if you follow the blog and follow the Twitter account, you will get notified every time we fix one. Uh, there aren't many. I think that's three in the last like two years. Um, in terms of how we receive and respond to issues, like I said, we have a security email address. Uh, all mail to that email address gets piped straight into a private channel um, for the security focused members of the Electron maintainers to, to review and try reproduce. Um, if we successfully reproduce it, um, we can start building out fixes and mitigations. We try to avoid breaking changes, but sometimes it's an unfortunate requirement of fixing a security issue that something has to break. Um, once we've got the fixes, uh, we, we do try to find these uh, client-side mitigations. Uh, you may notice if you read our security blog posts, we normally try to include like a few lines of JavaScript that instead of updating Electron to a patched version, you can add these few lines of JavaScript to your app and it will prevent the, the, the security issue from occurring. Uh, quite a lot of the time, we can successfully come up with those mitigations. Sometimes we can't, but we always try our best to make it as easy as possible for you guys to update your app without having to like jump three versions of Electron just to get a security fix. Um, once we've got all the fixes, um, we just release new versions of Electron, roll out the new versions, push out a blog post, as I said, and tweet about it. So if you're following the blog post, follow Twitter, you'll always get notifications of those security issues. Um, However, as app developers, there's a bunch of stuff that you can be doing that's security related that you all need to be aware of. Um, not necessarily security issues that we can fix, but common security issues in people who make apps. Uh, there's a great guide on our website called Security, Native Capabilities, and Your Responsibility. Uh, everyone who's building an app should read this at some point. There's about 12 uh, bullet points on the page that explain uh, common attack vectors, common issues where you've like misconfigured your browser window and left node open, uh, options you should enable to lock down your app, things like sandbox and context isolation. Uh, there's a massive list on this page. Uh, you should all read it. It's very, very helpful. Um, we are making changes at the moment to make Electron more secure by default, uh, things like context isolation and sandbox mode. Um, but they're currently opt-in, and you all should be looking to turn them on and to make your app more secure for your users. So uh, last but not least, the community. That's you folks. Um, all of what I've said so far is what the Electron maintainers uh, are doing and how we're working to get better at doing those things. Uh, there are some things you can all help us with, though. And I'm just going to highlight uh, the, the, the two that have the most impact. Uh, number one, try the betas. Literally, yeah, that. <laughs> um, we don't want you to like just throw the betas out to millions of users. Um, that's not what we want. We just want your feedback. Uh, <laughs> We use your feedback to determine when we can consider a release stable, and your feedback is critical to Electron working properly when we uh, do release stable and you go to upgrade to it. Uh, as a bonus, as aforementioned, uh, if you think your app can meet the requirements for the app feedback program, uh, you can reach out to uh, info at electronjs.org and see if there's a space for you to join in the next beta cycle. Um, don't go shipping the betas to millions of users. Just try it, run it through your QA, run it on your local machine, run it through your test suite see if it works. If there's an obvious problem, raise an issue, and we will try and fix it. <laughs> On that topic, number two, raise good issues. Um, we want to fix bugs when Electron is broken. Um, however, it's not our job to debug your app. Um, if someone comes along and raises an issue and says, this 10,000 line of code app doesn't work, plus help, we don't have the time to, to, to debug that. Um, if you, if, you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to help us out and actually get the bug fixed, please follow the issue template. Uh, check multiple versions of Electron. See when the bug actually first started happening. 
like if it first started happening in 303, but it worked in 302, include that information in the issue. That makes it so much easier for us to track it down because there won't be that many commits that landed in between those releases. Um, even better, if you can provide a minimal code example that demonstrates the issue. Um, quick shout out to Electron Fiddle. Where, where did Felix go? He's there. Felix made a brilliant app recently called Electron Fiddle. Uh, you can find it at uh, electron slash fiddle on GitHub. It's basically a, a, a minimal code editor that lets you like play and run uh, different versions of Electron. So if you make a small sample that has the problem, you can choose different Electron versions to run it against, see where it broke. And you can just publish that to a gist and include that GitHub gist URL on your issue. It makes it so much easier for us to test with if we can just pull down your gist, run it, and see what's going wrong. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. In summary, uh, Electron has grown substantially in the last year as both a project uh, and a community. Uh, the maintainers have had to scale a lot with it. Uh, we're working to improve things like our Chromium upgrade speed and communication regarding things like priorities and what we're working on. Uh, we do have some great stuff coming out at the moment. Electron 5 is coming soon uh, with a newer version of Chromium. Uh, Electron Nightlies are starting uh, and a new release schedule. Um, but we do need your help moving forward. Try out those betas, give us good bug reports, and let's all make Electron better for the future. Questions? Do we need a different mic? There we go. Thank you. Cool. Hi. Thanks so much for um, kind of explaining how you guys go about building Electron. Uh, what do you think about installable desktop and mobile PWA apps and how that will affect uh, Electron down the road? <laughs> that is an open-ended question. Um, I don't want to speak for the Electron team here, so I'm going to make it clear that this is like my opinion on the matter, uh, not, not everyone else's. I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on where PWAs are going. Um, PWAs are great. Um, they're, they're definitely pushing the web forward and pushing the web closer to the desktop. Um, there are obviously, like, it, it's a process that PWAs have to go through to get close to what Electron can provide. And I'm sure that for a lot of use cases of Electron, a PWA will start to solve lots of their problems. Um, all I see is like we've pushed or like Electron and, and like NWJS and other technologies like this have pushed PWAs into existence. Um, it showed that there's a need and a want for like JavaScript and, and web-based technologies on the desktop. Um, whether you decide to use PWAs or Electron, that's great. All we've done is prove the technology works. You choose whichever one works best for your use case. Let's go with that. You, I'm sure like, if you want more information, you can talk to anyone. There are quite a few Electron maintainers here at the moment. They all have their own opinions. Um, so you can talk to any one of them um, if you can find them. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, for folks who want to start contributing or like maybe uh, debug uh, the bugs they find, uh, where would you recommend kind of starting? Is there any documentation about the internals? Um, I've seen there's a doc about just how to build things, but it doesn't really point you anywhere about how things work. Um, so we have a, a th that documentation you have on how to build stuff. So I think it's called uh, just build instructions. Uh, it's inside docs slash tutorials on our, on our repository. There's a whole bunch of other markdown documentation in there as well uh, on things like how do you run it, how is like Electron pieced together. There's also a really great uh, blog series on uh, Electron's uh, blog from uh, Cheng Zhao, uh, who wrote the initial version of Electron, uh, on things like how we embed Node, uh, what's the process model, and explains a lot of that. Um, in terms of like, uh, debugging and stuff. I'm pretty sure there are debugging guides on there as well. If not, there are. I have confirmation that there are. Uh, if not, we have a, a, a Slack channel and discussion forums, and you can always raise issues and just be like, help, I want to help, but how? <laughs> Do we also, I mean, at least for those present, right? We're just about 90 minutes away from happy hour and all of us getting a drink and getting a coffee. We have a lot of electron maintainers here. Um, could just maybe all the electron maintainers that are open to speaking to newbies or like anyone just quickly raise their hand? Okay, so just look around the room. Okay, those are all people that like work on Electron. 
um, you can just hunt any of them down and they will be like super excited. Were you offering to help in any way? Um, all of us will be like super excited because God knows we need it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, really appreciate all the hard work uh, from all the Electron developers. Uh, my app uh, just broke in 4.0, and we tried to surface a bug in 2 and in 3, and then we did all of the correct, uh, you know, we created a, a repository to highlight the bug, and it just, a, the API just doesn't work. And basically, I can't upgrade. I, I'm just dead in the water until I get this fixed. So I think we're kind of in between, like, the app feedback program, because I think it would be just nice if there was a way to say, uh, this is like this is totally broken. Like it, it's really easy to get fixed, and I think I, we're just kind of swimming among all the other bugs. So, do you have any recommendation for how we can solve that? It, it, it's tough. I mean, like uh, if you look at the Electron repository, there's like 1,200 open issues at the moment, and there's probably only 10 or uh, 10 between 10 and 15 active maintainers. If that, it, it's hard to get on top of all of the bugs. <laughs> um, if there is something that's like super bad. Um, and you, you want it fixed, my best suggestion is actually just like have a go at hacking in a fix. Like if you ask for help on how to fix something, we're really, as Felix said, we're really down to help anyone who wants to get involved in actually fixing bugs. So if you want to jump in and be like, I know that this might not be on your plate right now, but I want to have a go. How do I like build Electron? How do I attach a debugger to it? How do I like log stuff properly? We're more than happy to like point you in the right direction for that and help you get going because that just helps us in the long run. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. If, if, you, if you make an issue properly and follow the, the issue guidelines and help us whenever we ask questions, and yeah, it, it's, it, it's a tough one because there's so many issues open, but we always do try to help. I mean, that's hard to like, quantify. We've had these discussions in the past, like critical to who? Like, because like that, there might be one like open source app who's like, I can't do this without X, but like everyone else doesn't need like cr critical makes sense when it's you're just talking about one product, but when you're talking about a framework, it's hard to determine criticality like that. If that makes sense, uh, I, I yeah. Without more context, I can't really be yeah. We'll get a lot of issues like that. Because <laughs> everyone who opens an issue cares. We'll have 1,200 issues labeled critical to someone. <laughs> yeah, we can talk later. Uh, first of all, great talk. Uh, I have two questions. One is like, uh, is there a re next time goal like to reduce the memory footprint and also the package size of the Electron apps? And also, like, uh, is there a place where I can find the next subsequent goals for Electron Apps? OK. So let's put that into three bits. Uh, number one, uh, memory usage. Uh, every time we update Chrome, we're going to get better at that kind of thing, because it brings in a newer V8 version. The V8 team is constantly working to improve things like performance and memory consumption and stuff like that. Um, in terms of Electron, if you find an actual memory leak in Electron, we're more than happy to like, dive in and look for that kind of thing. Um, but lots of the memory performance actually comes from things like uh, Chromium and V8. Um, so that's, I don't want to put the blame on them, but <laughs> um, it, it's a, a lot of the, the memory comes from, from that area of the code base. Uh, the second one was performance. Small, small packages. Sm size. Small packages. Um, we're kind of stuck on that one by Chromium as well. Chromium is just big. Um, the smallest you can probably zip down Electron to, I think, is about 50 or so meg. 30? 40. Zai got down to 40. Yeah. 40. We can get it down to 40 meg if you zip it. Um, everything else, it, like a substantial portion of that is literally just Chromium and Node. And, yeah. and the last one was, wasn't, wouldn't it be nice if we had like a document with all our goals? Coming soon, TM, maybe. <laughs> um, really, the best person to probably talk to would be Jacob over there, who is in charge of Electron, currently waving his hands. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're fixing everything. Long-term goals of the Electron project. I think that involves the community. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to say 
I'm gonna say let's cut here. We have now another coffee break, just so that you, you know, get another coffee before we go into the last talk. You might notice that I'm a coffee addict, but this is just like how I operate. I need like 10 coffees a day. So, another coffee break, then the last talk, and then we have dinner. All right, thank you, Sam. <laughs>